This is the Wonderfully Made Podcast, and I'm your host, Fifi Buchanan. On this show, I share personal experiences, narrate stories I've written to reveal truths about life and the human experience. I also share lifestyle improvement tips in bite-sized episodes, so you can listen during your commute, in the office, or in the comfort of your own home. My desire is that every time you listen, you are reminded that you are wonderfully made. So I asked the community what I should cover next, and most people voted for uncovering parts of yourself. And I decided to say uncovering rather than developing or discovering, because to uncover something means it's already there. And even if it may be hidden, it's possible you knew it was there all along. So when it comes to uncovering parts of yourself, I think about taking a closer look and learning more about yourself, but also acceptance. Accepting who you truly are, even when you face the possibility of rejection from people you love and respect. The first thing that comes to mind for me when it comes to uncovering parts of myself is who was I? What did I think about? And what did I love when I was a little girl? And keep in mind, in childhood, we are affected by others around us, sometimes as much as adults, but sometimes not. Maybe we aren't quite saying at four years old, we want to be a doctor or a lawyer. We're not quite to that place of wanting to please our parents or our community. But sometimes we might say colors, animals, and places that are our favorites that really aren't just because someone we admire also likes them. An older sibling, a parent, someone from a favorite show. But even still, the imagination of a child is far less restrained than that of an adult. They haven't experienced things that may cause them to be jaded or cynical. So think about it. Who did you want to be? I remember being fascinated by space as a little girl. I learned about astronomy when I was about seven or eight years old. And what excited me is that so much exists in outer space that we don't yet know about. It's the unknown. But then the known things too. The fact that there were high-powered telescopes that could allow us to lay eyes on other planets. And I could barely wrap my mind around the concept of the speed of light and how there were other galaxies, other universes. A lot more has been discovered since that imaginative little girl that was daydreaming in her room first thought about space. But what stands out to me is the excitement I felt around exploration. Exploration. It's not about me going into outer space or becoming an astrophysicist. It's about me getting back to opportunities that allow me to explore the unknown. It sometimes surprises me that I crave the unknown and the adventure of making it known to me because I love routine and familiarity. That's something that I've, I've, that's something that I've adopted as an adult. But I want you to think of some ways you used to imagine as a child. What excited you? What did you never tire of? Sometimes even the act of reflecting takes you to a place of discovering who you are. Other times it reignites the love or passion for something you once had but have since abandoned. Next, stop snacking on self-help content and take a deep dive. Here's what I mean. It's easy to feel moved by a quick snippet on TikTok or Instagram about all sorts of self-help topics, marriage, dating, finding a new job, finding yourself. And people really have the best intentions. They save the video, share it with friends, even repost it to their story. But for many, the journey ends there. And it gives a warm, fuzzy feeling like you learned something, like you actually have clarity. But really, you just snacked. If you want to know yourself and really feel whole, heal from some of the things you've been through, then a deeper dive is needed. So if you watch a video and you think, wow, I think my ex might have been a narcissist, or I did work in a toxic workplace, it's time to look for a book to dive in to learn more or book that therapy session, whatever it is that you need to better understand. That's what helps you really uncover parts of you. It means going deeper than surface level lessons. It could mean intentionally journaling your experience. 
It could be writing out your testimony and planning to share it. You decide. Next, and this is an important one, trust your judgment. I know it can be hard sometimes, particularly if you are a person who tends to like getting a second, third, or fourth opinion. You don't want to make the wrong choice. You want the approval of people you value. Whatever the reason, sometimes getting additional opinions drowns out your own voice. And if you cannot hear yourself think or speak, how will you ever really know who you are? So take the risk. Even if things don't turn out the way you wanted or expected, try not mentioning what you're thinking of doing next or what you're planning to buy or whatever is on your mind. Try doing it instead. You'll surely meet another part of yourself when you let go of any fear or judgment of yourself. Just like you would give intimate attention and time to someone you love, to really listen and understand. I want you to do that for you. And listen to your thoughts. Self-reflect. Find out why you want what you want. But please, don't take it to others sometimes. Let it sit with you. You be the one to carry things out or go in a different direction. Trust yourself. Quiet the noise around you of judgments, opinions, and expectations. Find out what you really want, who you really are, how you'd handle things, not how others would. It's scary and uncomfortable, but also really, really refreshing. Next, try new things or old things just to see how you feel. You know how some people say date yourself? I've always found that to be honestly super corny, but the concept does make a lot of sense. When two people meet and want to get to know each other, they date. They typically schedule shared experiences to have together, new foods, sporting events, travel, parties, maybe doing a craft together. Getting out and trying new things gives them a chance to overcome a challenge together and it shows character. They learn a lot. So trying new things might not always turn out to be a hit for you, but it could create a good memory and you could learn something about yourself. As we age, we sometimes tend to be more set in what we like and what we dislike, but sometimes we forget to go back and try those old things and make sure we still like them or still don't like them. And sometimes we give up the chance to try new things because we're already assuming we hate it. But it's not just for fun and adventures. I have ADHD, for instance, and life has changed quite a bit from the time that I was diagnosed until this present moment. It's my job to figure out what works for me in the present moment, to look for new solutions to old problems, to find a way of living that is conducive to my very best health and prosperity. So maybe I need to see if midday naps are helpful now, or a different supplement or medication. Maybe I need to explore a super early bedtime or taking something out of my diet. The goal is not to assume that I know. The goal is to become a student of me and the things that concern me. To be able to self-reflect and honestly answer to whether or not things are working the way they are or if I need to explore a change. Last, spend time alone. I realize that time to ourselves is a luxury, but really it's also a necessity. For many of us, as long as we are in the presence of others, and even when we're not, it's hard to focus on ourselves and what we need or how we see the world. We are taught that it is kind to consider what it would be like to walk in someone else's shoes. It is indeed kind. But sometimes we need time alone so we can breathe and so we can consider ourselves and only ourselves, who we are, what we want, where we want to be in a week, a month, a year. Time alone also gives you the chance to reset, to be alone and in no one's company, but your own means you get a chance to explore all of that talk I did about things being unknown and uncovering those alone moments are when it typically will happen. All in all, uncovering parts of yourself is best done when you can shut out the noise from your circumstances, others' judgments and opinions, the busyness of life, expectations, obligations. Although you may only be able to step away and quiet the noise for short moments at a time, savor them. 
I know so many people who simply do not value being alone for any moment of time. When they get free time, they are quickly trying to fill it with sound and movement to see who's available to save them from having to be alone. When people do this, they miss golden opportunities to sit with themselves, their thoughts, their dreams, or even problems not yet figured out. There are many ways we can uncover parts of ourselves, little gems within us just waiting to no longer be hidden. Be patient, give yourself grace, and 